Thank you very much for inviting me to present my work in this exciting symposium. Well, as Andrea said, my name is uh, Sakin Garcia Muros, and I go to present the work entitled Economic and Distributional Implication of Alternative Mechanisms for Financing Renewables. This work has been done with uh, the help of me, my two co authors, Christoph Boringer from the University of Oldenburg, and Mikel Gonzalez Eguino, also from, from the Basque Center for Climate Change. The structure of the presentation is quite common, so I go to start with the introduction of the topic, then the methodology, the scenario and results, and finally the conclusion. So, the idea of this work is that, as much as you know, renewables are getting more important, more important in the electricity supply, in the electricity production, and Spain is one of these cases. In fact, in 2040, as we can see, renewables were 40% of the total electricity supply. So, although renewables are getting more cheaper and more competitive and are improving a lot in the last years, they still need some support from the governments to achieve this target. And this is also the case in Spain. In fact, in 2030, the support of the governments for the renewables, it was uh, 6.7 billion of euros. So the problem for the policy makers is uh, how finance this uh, 7.6 billion uh, of, of euros to promote renewables. In the case of the Spanish uh, government, they decide to finance, uh, to finance this amount through an electricity tax, through different electricity taxes. First was uh, fitting tariffs, and now it's more general electricity taxes. So the next question is, if we go to the society, who is really paying for these electricity taxes or electricity circuits? Or in other way, who bears the burden of greening electricity? So here we have the electricity expenditure by income group. One, it will be the poorest in income households, and 20, it will be the richest households. So here we can see how there is a gap between the poorest household and the richest households in terms of their expenditure of electricity. And with the tendency of uh, electricity price higher and higher in the last year, we can see how this gap between the poorest uh, household and the richest household is, is, uh, is bigger. And this is something, this way to finance renewables, something that is not really worried, or it's not so we only worried the the household, if not also the other consumers that are the companies, are worried because they feel that they have a huge cost for a very important input, like is the electricity. So, in fact, they say the, Sp the Spanish Employers Organization has proposed that the electricity cost not related to the cost of the supply should be financed uh, from other tax sources. So, the idea of this work is try to find alternative ways to finance renewables and solve these both problems, or at least the distributional issue. So the methodology, when we do distributional analysis, we normally use micro models or demand model, in our case, an AIDS model. And I have to say that this makes sense because these uh, models normally are done with a service with a lot of data. In our case, for example, we use the household budget survey with uh, uh, take into account 20,000 households per year. So in this way, you can capture the behavior of the households and provide a realistic picture of the substitution of, this, of these households. But the bad side, because normally there is a bad side in the models, is that we are only focused in one side of the economy. We are only focused in, this, in a household level in this case. And sometimes with these macro models, it's quite difficult to analyze uh, macro policies, as is this case. On the other side, macro models like Fiji modeling um, analyze the economy as a whole. So through these models, we can analyze macro, macro, macro scenarios and macro policies, and also see what happened in a sectoral level and an efficiency uh, point of view. But the bad side in this model is that normally they only use one representative household. So through these models, we cannot do this uh, distributional analysis. So the idea here is, in our, in our approach, is combine these two methodologies through a hard link, where we introduce the policy in the macro model, the CG chain the prices, these prices chain the behavior of the consumers, and this con chain of the consumption chain again the, the, the prices in the macro model. So we do that in an iterative, iterative way, 
until we have a new equilibrium and we have the both sides, the macro model with the macro and, and sectoral effects and in the other side we have the macro model, the micro model with the distributional impacts. So the scenario that we have simulated is uh, if we will be the policy makers and we have the companies saying us uh, and, the and the industries we have a huge cost with this electricity tax so uh, and the government believe this this lobby and they are worried about the the competitiveness losses of these sectors and they say well I keep the electricity tax to finance renewables but now I go to introduce exemption in the industries exemption in the producers on the other side the government could say well it's true that it's quite regressive this way to finance renewables no so I keep this way to finance renewables through uh, electricity tax but I go to introduce exemption on the household level. And finally, we say, well, why we should finance renewables through an electricity tax when we can use other taxes or other sources? And we simulate three different sources, which are the value added tax, the oil taxes, a full tax, and also transfers, which will be, it's not exactly, but it's a proxy of uh, income taxes and transfer from the government to the, from the household to the government. So the first impact that we want to see is the distributional impact, what's happened in the welfare of the household per income group. So here we can see how when, the, when you introduce exemption of the producers, the household will pay for this uh, renewable promotion, those the welfare impacts will increase in the lowest income household increasing the regressive of the electricity tax. On the other side, if we decide to uh, introduce exemption of the, of the household level, we increase the progressive of, the, of these measures with, welfare impacts, with positive welfare impacts in the lowest income household. On the other side, the next question is, well, what happened with these alternative ways to finance renewables? So, the most progressive uh, way is the transfers, because in this case, only the households with a uh, greater income will pay for these uh, renewable promotions. The next one is the value added tax, which is quite proportional, and the reason is because in Spain, the, the value added tax is proportional. And finally, the full tax, which is seen proportional and affect more the welfare of the middle class. This is mainly because uh, the reason is the, the consumption pattern of the middle class. We can say that if you are very poor, uh, you have not car, so you are not affected by the fuel tax. But if you are rich, also you have a Ferrari or a Porsche, uh, your expenditure in gasoline will be not much higher than in a regular house. On the other side, we want to see from the company side, from the industrial side, the the output when we introduce this scenario and we want to focus in two sectors that are the, do, the both sectors more affected by this type of policy which is the electricity uh, sector and the energy intensity sector. So in this case when we introduce exemption of the producers the output of this both sector increase. On the other side when, you, when we introduce exemption of the household the electricity output increase because now the household will be increase their consumption in electricity, but the energy intensity, uh, the energy intensity sectors, uh, the output will decrease, which is normal because now they are more affected. They are, uh, they bear the cost of the of the renewable promotion. In the other scenarios, we can see how the Fed is more similar to the exemption on the on the producers because if you think this scenario are only affecting the household level. So we can say that in this alternative scenario, the producer, the industries are already exempt to pay these taxes. So this is because the defect is similar. And finally, I, I want to show you the last result that is that maybe from the government side, we are not only worried about the income distribution, if not maybe we are worried about some possible vulnerable household or household that we think that can be a pool of, of voters that for example all people single single people with single well retired people 
or also single children, parent, uh, monoparental families. So here we can see how the um, all families, the old households are more affected by the exemption of the producers because they expend a greater proportion of their income in electricity. So they will be more affected by this way to finance renewables and also single parent families because these families are normally in a very low income groups. With the other alternative, when the transfers, when we introduce transfer, there are huge benefits for, the, for this uh, type of households because they are, uh, they are not uh, donors or transfer for the government if not they receive uh, transfer for the, for the government. And in the other case, depends a lot of the consumption of this different type of household. So just to conclude, uh, we can say that, well, this is not really new, but it's good uh, seeing data that uh, promotion renewables through electricity taxes is regressive. Also, we can see that exemption on producers or exemption on household, there are trade-offs uh, between protecting sectoral output effects and protecting low-income household. And finally, we can, say, we can see that there are possible benefits in the both sides when we introduce alternative measures to finance uh, renewables. So this is the main idea in this presentation. So thank you very much for your attention. This is our group, or a small group at BC3. Chris is not here, but yeah, he should be. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay, so we can take some questions. Joshua King, so we start here. Your second. Uh, thanks, very, very interesting talk. I, I'm not sh entirely sure I understood the setup though. So uh, the tax on producers or the producers paying um, towards renewables. Well, the tax is, uh, the first tax is an electricity tax that have to pay the final consumers. The final consumers can be the households or also the industries. Fine. And then yeah. the idea is introduce exemption in one side or exemption in the other side or finally try to find alternative ways to find them. So that, that clarifies my first question, so then my, my second question. Um, so what's then assumed, in terms of the tax on producers on industry, for instance, what's assumed about how that's passed through to consumer prices and, and bills? And, or is it seen that it well, it's in the model. Of shares? It is true that there is a pass when you introduce only exemption on the households, there is a, an, an income effect and also a demand effect in the, in the household level, but the effect is not a, as high as when you introduce uh, exemption in the household. So you can say that the benefit is net, uh, is a net benefit for the household when only the producers pay. Because it is true that the industries will uh, move some costs for the households, but not the full cost of the, of the policy. Okay, so because so, yeah. they also have, uh, if, for example, if the methodology will be an input-output model, the price that you introduce, uh, the tax, will be completely for the household. But in this case, as there are possibilities of substitute uh, different goods and different inputs also in the industrial level, the effect is, is lower and the benefit is net for the household. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your presentation. It was really interesting. Uh, my question is really close to, to his. Uh, it's about the cost pass-through effect, no? Since you may have this charge in the electricity, for instance, they may pass through the cost to the consumers, and how do you deal with that? But my question is not that. My question is that we know from the, well, my question, my general question would be how your results can be compatible to those of carbon taxes or carbon prices. For instance, in the UTS, we know that there's a carbon price that actually the energy intense uh, industries are get free allowances, so they are subsidized. They, are, they, don't have, they, ex they have an exemption on the carbon price. And we know that the electricity producers are passing through the opportunity cost of that, of that price that they don't have to face. So my question is, to what extent your results are also 
or could be, or if we could say the same if we had a carbon tax or a carbon price in the in this setting. And that uh, if you introduce a higher carbon tax. Yeah. Well, no. A ha yeah. So. So the I problem mean, you are, is that now, about the, fit and, uh, the, the, fit the moment that you have now, the the CO two price is very low. Yeah. So I don't think that if you have or not have it this uh, CO two price, it will affect a lot of the results. If you're asking if maybe in the future the CO2 tax would be much, much higher, even if we can say 20 euros per ton of CO2 or 25, I think that the, the results can be different. Uh, the, the results can be different in the way that uh, probably the electricity price also will be higher, um, but will be different in the way that the regressive effect probably will be much higher because you are increasing more and more uh, one commodity that normally is consumed more by the low-income households. So this is the, the main idea here, that you have to take into account the low-income households when you introduce different measures to promote, in this case, renewables or to protect the, or to, or to fight against the climate change, like the CO2 case. Actually, my question relates very well to that one, to yours. Um, I think I understood your question in, in a way that the, you would have the same problem uh, if you have a CO2 price uh, at yes. the end. And, and this problem you cannot really solve by shifting it to the VAT or so. Uh, so then the question is, shouldn't one solve energy-related policy issues with energy policies and social policy issues with social policies and uh, just compensate low-income in houses by uh, complementary social policies and not therefore changing the energy policies as yeah. you propose? I, I, well, I agree with your, with your point about this uh, idea that, well, you put in, some, in one side you have the energy policy and in the other side you have the social uh, policies but this exercise is uh, just to see that, to see the, the distributional effects, the social effects of energy policies. Because if, not, if you not take into account this part, it's a really rare thing that the people go to, to support uh, an energy transition or, or... Except if they are compensated by adequate yeah, social policies. Sure. Yeah, sure. But I guess there's not a full overlap, no? I mean, ours, we have as well done studies where you can show that actually there are quite a lot of energy poor households, no? Um, that they are not under some social security programs. And these are actually the, the ones that you're really worried. So efficiency in energy policy is a good thing, no? Uh, and of course, you have to as well take care of, the, of these households, no? But it's surprising that this is not a, a really full overlap, no? On these two dimensions. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, if there are no more questions, uh, then I would uh, move on uh, to the last presentation. Um,